I'm Chris. I'm one of the software engineers at Peak AI working in the DevOps team. I thought I'd start with a quote which may be familiar to some of you. If not, you can count yourself lucky. But you may have at least heard the war stories of the mad panic that follows people trying to solve this issue where you've got to quickly delete a token, update, create a new token, and then update all your code base so that it can be using the new token. At Peak, we use AWS CloudFormation to deploy and manage our infrastructure. In fact, we have over 1,300 stacks across our different accounts and environments. But managing the access tokens used by all these stacks can be a nightmare. So much so that we actually decided that we wanted to create a solution where I could automate this. We set out four key, cri four key criteria for this. The first was that we had to be able to store our secrets securely. Secondly, we need to be able to access them easily from our CloudFormation stacks so that it could be passed to the resources. We wanted to also be able to easily rotate the process. We need to be able to easily rotate these secrets when we needed to. And we needed the entire process to be repeatable so that we could deploy it to any of our stacks or environments. So when we started looking into this, there were two main options. The first was that you could use Lambda functions to fetch the values from parameter store. And this would involve one Lambda function, which would fetch the value from parameter store and then write it to a file in S3. You would then need to have an inline function in each of your CloudFormation stacks, which would read the value from S3 and pass it through to the resources in the stack. There's a few problems with this. The first is that having inline Lambda functions in the stack template can make it quite messy and hard to read. Also, if you need to change the code, you need to change it in each of your stacks. But the main issue is that you're taking a value that was stored securely and writing it as plain text to a file in S3, which defeats the purpose of storing it securely in the first place. And secondly, if you get the permissions wrong on that bucket in S3, it could be open to the internet as plain text. Alternatively, you could store the secrets as parameter values in your stack. Now, this is actually how we did things at peak and it worked okay, but there's still a few issues with it. Mainly, Every time you wanted to update one of your secret values, you needed to find, manually find and update each stack which used it, which could take a lot of effort to do. So we decided that we needed to, come, we needed to find an alternative for this. And AWS actually gave us one with this line of code. Now, it may not look that interesting, but what this code means is that we could store a value in Secrets Manager and then reference it directly from our CloudFormation template. All we would need to do is change the secret name and secret key for each value we wanted. So instead of having to create a parameter, pass the value of the secret token into that parameter and then reference the parameter everywhere, we just needed one line of code and just needed to change the name of the secret we wanted to reference. This meant that we didn't need to store any secrets as parameters anymore. And actually, we could restrict access to the token values. In AWS, you should always try and practice the idea of least privilege, which means that you only give people permission to the resources that they need. But for us, when we were storing our secrets as parameters, everyone needed to be able to access the token value so they could pass them in. But now everyone only needs to know the name of that token value. So we could actually, using IAM permissions, control who has access to each of the token values and who's allowed to change them which makes the whole process much more secure. It also means that rotating secrets is much easier. Now, instead of having one secret value stored somewhere like parameter store, our secrets manager, and then having to also go through and change it, having it stored in each up stack as a parameter value, every stack just references one value in secrets manager, which makes the process of rotating everything much easier because we can change it in the secrets manager and then it will automatically be changed in all of the stacks. Problem solved. Well, unfortunately, not quite. The problem with CloudFormation is, or one of the problems with CloudFormation is that when you update your stack, it will only update if you have a change to one of the resources in your stack template. So when we change the value in Secrets Manager, even though that value has changed, 
the line of code in the stack template which references that secret hasn't changed at all, which means that it won't register as a change in CloudFormation and we won't be able to update the stack. So to make this process work, we realized that what we'd actually have to do is remove and then recreate each of the resources. This process of removing and recreating meant that when we recreated the resource, it would pull through this new value from Secrets Manager. But to be able to automate this, we would not only have to find all of the stacks which are using the secret value, we also need a process that could update them multiple times, once to remove the resource and then another time to recreate them. And we also needed to be able to automatically trigger this process. You don't want a situation where you've changed all the values in the secrets manager and then through one reason or another have forgotten to update all of the stacks. But we'll come to the process later. First, we needed to work out a way of being able to remove and recreate our resources. And to do this, we decided to use CloudFormation conditions. So CloudFormation conditions allow us to define the circumstances under which resources are created or configured. Now, in doing this, basically means that when a condition equates to true, the resource will be created. And if it was false, it would be deleted. So in order to do this, we decided to create a parameter or add a parameter to each of the stacks that was going to use a secret value. This parameter would be called rotate token. So we could define each condition based on the value of rotate token. So the parameter was correct. If the parameter was true, then the condition would be true and our resource would be created. Likewise, if it was false, the condition would be false and it wouldn't create any of the resources. Once you've defined the condition, it's as simple as just adding it as a line into this into each of the resources as we've done here with the pipeline webhook so now we have a way of deleting and recreating our resources we need to come up with a process of finding and updating all of the stacks to do this we decide to use aws step functions these are a great way of building a repeatable workflow so the first step in the step function was to find all of our cloud formation stacks now we'd already added a parameter into each stack called rotate token. So this was a simple process of using the AWS SDK. We just made a call to CloudFormation and list all the stacks which were using that parameter value. because so we knew it would only be used by ones that had, we needed to update. It. Then once we had that list, it's a simple case of updating them to remove the resources. So to do this again, using the SDK, we would update each stack in turn, but changing the value of rotate token from true to false. This would delete all of the resources using the secret value. Now, when we we're doing this, we needed a way to be able to handle it, handle the situation if one of the stack updates failed to happen. To do this, we decided to use parallel state, which is the green box you can see here around the two blocks. Our parallel states are used to execute branches as concurrently as possible because they will wait for each branch to terminate before moving to the next state. But one other thing they are great for in step functions is error handling. Because as you can see in the diagram on the right, you can wrap multiple branch, multiple steps into one branch and then use the branch effectively as a try catch block. This means that instead of having an error handling for each of the steps, you can just have one block at the end to handle all of the errors, which makes your step function much easier to read and follow. And if you want to learn more about this, there's actually a great article by Yang Kui on this, which is where I've borrowed this diagram from. So once we've updated all of our stacks, and that's gone fine, we needed to be able to wait for the stacks to update before we trigger the second update. Now we've done this using combination a wait step and a choice step. A wait step does exactly what it says. It will wait for a set amount of time before moving on to a next stage. And this that would be a lambda function which would check the process of the stack updates. We would then have the choice step. Now choice states are what you can use to determine where the state machine will transition to next. And you define them using these choice rules that you can see on the right hand side. Now each rule has to have a variable comparison operator and the next value. You can see the comparison operator we've got for these is all string equals, but there's a wide range that you can use, such as and or boolean exists and so on. So 
So the next value can, is where the state machine will go to next. So if the variable equals finished, it will go to the next update block. If it's in progress, it will go back to the wait step and then the process will get start again. Ideally, what we should have done is have a default value in this choice rules. Now the default value is effectively your escape clause. It's what you use if none of the choice rules are taken, the default value would then be picked. And it can help you stop, it can help stop you getting stuck in an infinite loop in the step function. So really what we should have done here is where we've got failed, instead of being a rule, that should have been the default value. So that if this string wasn't finished or wasn't in progress, it would have automatically picked failed. But assuming all our stacks have updated correctly, we can then perform the second update on them. Now this time in the update, we need to be recreating all of our resources so that they can pull through this new value from Secrets Manager. So to update the values, we do the same logic as in the first update using the AWS SDK. Well, this time we would change the value of rotate token from false to true. Therefore, change the condition to true and recreating all of our resources. And the rest of the step function, you can see, would be very similar to the process. We would wait for all the updates to finish, check that they're done, and once they're done, we would exit the step function. Now with that, we now have a process where we can update all of our stacks once we change a value, and that value will be passed through to each resource in those stacks. But we still need a way of triggering this process in the step, the step function. So to do that, we decided to use Cloud, CloudWatch event rule. Now CloudWatch event rule can be defined using this event pattern. And it basically says that when we made a change in Secrets Manager, if we were either Finding secret, updating, or creating one, we would trigger our step function. This meant that we didn't have to think to also update all the stacks, that would be possibly just taken care of for us. Now, when we're doing this in development, it worked brilliantly. But as soon as we added it to test, to check it a bit more thoroughly, everything seemed to be breaking. And the main reason for this is that we'd only been in development, we'd only been updating one secret at a time. As soon as we decided to update multiple secrets, this led to then multiple step functions being triggered. And they were all trying to update the same CloudFormation stacks at the same time. So we were trying, so they were either trying to update a stack that was already in progress or remove resources which had already been removed and it was just causing lots of errors. So we realized that we needed a way of controlling the process of starting, the of triggering our step function. And to do this, we decided to use an FQS queue or more specifically a first in first out queue. This meant that, so instead of adding, instead of triggering the step function from a cloud event rule directly, the CloudWatch event rule would add a message to the SQS queue. We would then have a Lambda function, which would check the queue at regular set, regular times to see if there are any messages there. If there was a message, it would pick the message up and check the step function, and check to see if there was a step function already running. If there was, it would make the message visible again so that it could be picked up on the next check. However, if one of the step functions, if none of the step functions were running, Lambda would then be able to trigger the step function and would process the ticket. The message is done once the step function are completed. This meant that instead of having lots of step functions going at the same time, we could be confident that one, only one step function would ever be running at once, no matter how many secrets we updated or however many messages were in the queue. And because we set the queue up as first in, first out, or FIFO queue, this meant that if something, if we had three messages in the queue and something happened during the second one, we knew that the order of the, the secrets which had been updated because they were in, still in order in the queue. So with that, we had a working solution. We were storing our secrets securely in Secrets Manager. And if we need to, we could even add further restrictions on who could access those tokens. We could easily access each secret value from CloudFormation with one line of code. All we needed to do is change the name of the secret that we were accessing. And we had an, a process in place where we could rotate all the secrets used by all of our resources. And that has been automated as we've just gone through. We, could also, we also knew that this process was repeatable. By following proper naming conventions for all of our stacks and functions, 
this was, we were able to deploy this into any of our accounts in any of our environments without causing any clashes. Now, even though we have a working solution for this, it still isn't ideal. It still really isn't finished. There's always improvements that you can make to things. And this is no exception. The first would be to improve the overall logic of the step function. I also already mentioned earlier that we hadn't involved, we hadn't used a default value in our choice rules, which we should have done. I also mentioned that when we were, if one of the stack updates failed, the entire process would fall back and then the step function would exit. Now, ideally, this isn't how you'd want things to work. You would want the process to continue. You need the process to handle that error, but then also continue to update the rest of the stacks instead of exiting completely. The problem with that is that you need some kind of record of which stack had failed. So even if you did have a method in place to roll it back so that it was in the correct state, you'd still need to know to go back after and manually update it so that it had the new secret value. And you could do this by having some kind of report that was generated once the process was complete. This report could be as simple as just a list of stack names, or it could be the success and failure rate of everything. This would mean that instead of having to go through CloudFormation Console to work out which stack, which stack you needed to then manually change, you could just wait for the process to finish and look at the report at the end to see which stacks you need to go and find to manually update. Now, there's still the process of having to manually do something in this, but updating three stacks is much better than having to update 1300. But again, even with this, it would rely you have to sit and watch the step function execute, which isn't the best thing to spend your time doing. Ideally, what you'd want is to be able to change the value in Secrets Manager and then get on with something else while the process is looking after itself. And to do this, you could add integrations with something like Slack. So that you would update the value in Secrets Manager, and then once the process is complete, you would get a notification come through to a Slack channel of your choice. And you could even, in this notification, have a summary of the report, which could either say 96% successful, or it could just list the stack names, which need to then be changed. You could even potentially use something like AWS Chatbot, where you could maybe even update stacks directly, action those stacks even directly from Slack without having to go into AWS at all. But by having these improvements in place, you would take something from a working solution to a fully automated solution and something that you could have complete confidence in using in production. So that if someone comes up to you and says they've pushed all their access tokens to GitHub, instead of having a mad panic of trying to go through and fix everything, you just need to change three values or the values in Secrets Manager and then let the process take care of itself, fully automated. Now, so if you've enjoyed the talk and would like to actually read more about it for some reason, I do have a blog on our Medi on Peaks Medium page for it, along with blogs written by some of our other engineers. We also have our GitHub page where we've got some open source projects. And once I've managed to get around time to make the improvements into this stage, into this process, I would like to potentially open source this tool as well. And that, thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the Q&A after.